I've been trying to sleep for an hour and a half now and I can't because I'm so flipping excited. <laughs> around 6 30 i have pretty much not slept i've got less than an hour over the course of last night but that's purely because of my excitement and i know i'm not going to be able to get to sleep so i'm going to start getting ready now the thing is i set so many alarms last night and stuff trying to make sure that i woke up at the right time didn't even get to sleep at the right time but Hey ho! Hey all you Hellmaniacs, it's Hellmanator, and today I am going to Hobbiton, the set from one of my favourite film franchises, in fact it is my favourite film franchise of all time. I am so flipping excited. Oh, this is going to be awesome. I barely slept, as I said, but uh, I should be alright, and now I need to start getting ready. The fun part about this trip is that I've planned out how I'm getting to Hobbiton, uh, but I haven't planned out how I'm getting back, which means in theory I might get stuck at the like in-between section I'm going to called Matamata, I believe, and uh, I might have to stay overnight there. I'll work it out. So the plan is to walk into Hamilton Central, catch a bus from there to Matamata, where I will then be getting off and waiting an hour to get some lunch. Then I'll be heading to the Matamata Eye site, which is run by Hobbiton, where I will catch another bus run by them to go to Hobbiton itself and get a guided tour, essentially. Uh, I won't be the only one on the tour, so I'm not sure exactly how much I'll be able to film, but I'm going to try my hardest to get as much as possible. And also, I'm going to bring in my camera anyway, because I want some flipping cool pictures. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, bind them. Is it sad that I know the entire poem? Because that isn't the entire poem but I do know the rest of it. Or is it just kind of interesting that I know it? The words for the whole poem are actually three rings for the elven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone, nine for mortal men doomed to die, one for the dark lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where shadows lie, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them in the land of Mordor, where shadows lie. Can you tell I like Tolkien? I can tell I like Tolkien. I mean, he's one of the most influential literary writers of all time. I've got a load of his books. I've got The Hobbit, I've got all of The Lord of the Rings, I've got The Silmarillion. I've been meaning to get Beren and Luthien for a while, but I haven't actually managed to track it down yet. Well, I know, I mean, I've seen it, but whenever I've seen it, I haven't had any money. So, <laughs> there's that. I might just listen to the audiobook instead, although I do already know what happens of course because I'm that much of a Tolkien head that I've read the appendices and I've read through Tolkien's encyclopedias and whatnot that tell me exactly what he wrote about each topic just because I felt like it but I still want to read it. Of course, I didn't realise that today would be the day that it rains. So I've picked the one day out of it, the days recently where it's decided to actually rain, which is great. I've walked about 10 minutes out, but with how bad this rain is, I don't want to risk taking my laptop. Uh, I was mainly bringing it so I could do some editing on the bus, but I'm going to head back to my accommodation now, put it down, hide it away, and head off. It's flipping nasty out there. Oh sure, now I'm soaked and look like a weirdo. Now you stop raining. Sure, sure. Well if there's one thing about New Zealand which is true more than anything that I've noticed so far, is that the weather is flaming up predictable. The annoying thing is, now I have to carry around a jacket all day in my bag, just in case it does start raining. I forgot my ID, which means that I wouldn't have been able to get a drink at the Green Dragon. 
which would have sucked, but luckily I've remembered to get some cash out, meaning that now I can take the bus into the transport centre, meaning that I don't have to walk so I can go back and get my ID. Oh, you can search far and wide, you can drink the whole town dry, but you never find a beer so brown, never find a beer so brown, or you never find a beer so brown as the one we drink in our hometown. So you can keep your fancy ales, drink them by the flagon, but the only brew for the brave and true comes from the Green Dragon. Do you get the feeling I'm just maybe a little bit excited about this? Well that's a good thing that came out of this already, I found a Mongodium that I can eat from. I've got about half an hour until my bus leaves, so I've got myself a chicken drumstick, a sausage in here, and then some chips, because I need lunch. Light rain and strong winds once again. Chicken seems to be quite a thing over here. I don't know whether it's just where I've been, but uh, every bakery that I've been in has also coincidentally sold fried chicken and chips. It's very easy to come across. They made a musical out of Green Day. Okay. Uh, sure. I mean, I like Green Day as much as the next pop punk fan, but uh, a musical feels kind of weird. I don't know. The weather improves again when we head off, or rather when we get to Hobbiton. I don't want it being like this when I'm trying to, you know, enjoy the Shire. I swear I did style this this morning. On the bus to Matamata now, where I shall have to walk to another building, which I don't know where it is, to try and find the bus that I will be taking to Hobbiton. This is why I flipping hate coaches. Mata Mata for those that are getting off there. Mata Mata coming up. Here's the eyesight that I need to go, go to. Just, just here. <laughs> Look at this thing. Blimey is it windy, but here it is. The information site in Mata Mata, which will then be where I get my bus to go to Hobbiton. Got it. Ah, I'm going to Hobbiton. Tad bit windy then. This is such a cool concept. You just take a book or leave it or share it, swap it, donate it, whatever. And it's literally just in the middle of town for anyone to use. It's so cool. For those of you who are about as in the know as Graham Norton was when he interviewed Elijah Wood. Hobbiton in Hobbiton. This is it! This is all right. It's a real so listen, it's a, re it's a real place. They've actually- No, it's not! Graham. I'm going to explain why I'm so excited to go to this place. First off, I'd be excited in general to go to a film set, even if it's about filming there, because it's just awesome to see where they filmed. But the more important part is, with The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, Hobbiton is still there. 
Now that might sound crazy, but here's what happened. When they filmed Lord of the Rings, they made the set out of plywood and scaffolding and very basic stuff so that it could be built and taken down as quickly as possible. When they went back and rebuilt it for The Hobbit, they built it out of proper wood and stone and stuff so that it would last. So you can visit Hobbiton yourself if you want to. It's amazing. I got bored so I decided to go into McDonald's to see if they had any different items than we do in the UK. Wasn't going to buy anything but then I saw something that intrigued me. This. This is what they call a Fanta Ice. I don't know if we have it in the UK because I don't go to McDonald's all that much but I don't remember us having it. It looks a bit like a um, Tango Ice Blast only orange so uh, let's give it a try. That's exactly what it is. It's pretty darn good though. Actually, that might be a bit harsh on it. It does taste exactly like flat New Zealand Fanta specifically, not regular Fanta because British Fanta tastes radically different. Uh, and the texture's a bit softer, I guess, than the Ice Blast. But then again, I like Ice Blast, so. The thing is, I saw the sign Barberton on the way here. So I know it's only like five minutes away and it's flaming awesome, I can't wait. Ah, this is gonna be so cool. There was a reason people called me the king of the nerds, wasn't there? I've never really had a bucket list, but if I were to, Hobbiton would definitely be on it. So, you know, just a tad bit exciting. Here it is, oh, this is gonna be flaming cool. Or rather it would be if that bus wasn't just dropping people up and I'm getting on the next bus as soon as it comes. Uh. How long is it? It feels like I've been waiting here forever, but in reality, I've been here for about an hour at most, and I've been wandering about, so, you know. <laughs> I'm just impatient. It's Hobbiton, I need, to, I need to see the Shire. There we go, here's the bus. Oh, this is gonna be cool. I can't wait. <laughs> drive down. Found the Alexander farm from the air and it, uh, for some reason from the air it looked right and when we landed it was absolutely perfect. The first man up there, you might have recognised him, he served up to a restaurant standard so they were very well fed hobbits. All my spoons. But the main thing that gives the way for us is the very best garden. Gardening really is something hobbits are very passionate about, whether for food or for beauty, and it does seem like that hobbit couldn't care less. Just a tad bit tall for the holes. So, give it its tree shape. 
with silica wrapped around the outside. That's what's giving the bark its texture. And, and this is another way we get to see that forced perspective. If you build two sets identical in every way apart from their size, that then changes the proportions of the actors you put inside of them. So the hobbits, very large set. The character was working closest to them at the time. It's mad, isn't it? The effort they went to with this two sizes, this fourth perspective idea, Lord of the Rings was actually the first film of its size trying to use this much of this technology. They could have actually filmed both sets of actors together and then just... All of the photos next to my end. <laughs> and then I'll do tours when I'm not needed there or if they need me for tours they can call me up off of the gardening. The home of Samwise Gamgee. 100% real because we're so happy to see his little girl again. And that baby is now driving. Bye bye Sam. To stand beneath our party tree. Now this 120 year old radiata pine is the main reason we were chosen as a film location. The scouts were drawn here because of all the rolling green hills. This is the best choice ever. <laughs> but um, when I see kind of little groups like this going around, that's going to be You can search far and wide, you can drink all and dry you never find a beer so brown, never find a beer so brown Or you never find a beer so brown, it's one we drink in our hometown So you can keep your fancy ales, drink them by the flagon But the only brew for the brave and true comes from the green dragon Here we go <laughs> This stuff looks good. And look at that fire. Well, you can't exactly. But oh, there we go. That is. Sorry. That's what you want to be looking at right now. I got the amber ale from here. There are four drinks you can get a, uh, a beer an ale as I've got, a apple cider, and a non-alcoholic ginger beer. My camera's starting to die, so I may have to switch over to my phone. When in Hobbiton, do as the hobbits do. That is so flaming good. Mm. Chest, and that was highs as well. Brilliant. I'm just going to ask you, what is your view on shopping? Are you wanting to go around the gift store? I'd like to, yeah. but if the others aren't wanting to. It's all cool, there's one on the way up, on the way out is all the same. Yeah.
Mm. It's a good scone. Technically the chips were elevenses, so this is my lunch. Eat like a hobbit. Is that a cat? That's a that's a live cat. Okay. There's an inn, there's an inn, there's a merry old inn beneath the old grey hill. Heading back now. <laughs> that was freaking amazing. So after 110 days in the studio, we finally make it out into the sunshine. I was right, the camera did die, but that's okay. I um, have got a ticket to go back to Hamilton now. Fortunately for me as well, this bus should be here before long. Anyway, I ordered this ticket about 20 minutes before it's supposed to arrive, so that worked out well. But I also got this bad boy, which is, of course, the sign outside of Bilbo's house in Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. So, uh, yeah, that's going on my door. I mean, not only does it show my nerdy side, but look at look at the message. Tell me that doesn't suit an introvert like me. <laughs> I was very tempted to spend a considerable amount, $210 I think it was, on uh, the leaf brooch that Mary, Pippin, Frodo and Sam all have. Uh, it's obviously not just like a regular brooch of silver design and it's very cool. It looked flaming awesome but I decided against it because money. just leaving the station now because this is a different bus apparently there were more but left later just not off my iPhone for some reason don't know why well I'm back on campus now uh, obviously significantly later uh, but the buses have all worked out for me I've managed to bus it everywhere today fortunately which worked out quite well for me considering when I first considered going to Hobbiton I was worried I'd have to walk the entire way uh, just to get there which is about 9 hours and 53 minutes I believe so saved a bit of time and I'm back so it's a day later I've had time to think over my experience at Hobbiton and I've also had time to work out a way where I can sit down and record Hooray! So what did I think about my time at Hobbiton? Now, naturally, as a Lord of the Rings nerd, I thought it was flipping great. I, uh, I loved it. The experience itself is flipping amazing. It's unlike anything else I've done before. The closest I can describe it as is, um, for those of you who went to the Doctor Who experience when that was a thing in Cardiff Bay, 
Uh, it's kind of like that, only way, way cooler. <laughs> it's very different from just going to like a place and being like, I know that they filmed here because you, you actually are interacting with the set as it was during filming. It's very cool to see. Obviously the Hobbit holes and all of the tiny little details that they put in. For example, there was something I remembered from the extended edition documentaries that then the tour guide mentioned, which was that there are plum trees on. Now, they weren't in season, obviously, so when you saw them in the clips, probably they weren't looking their best. But those plum trees had to be specifically imported for this film because all of the plum trees in New Zealand, their branches would have been way too high for hobbits to reach. And why did they do that? Because there was one flipping line in the books that said that hobbit children used to play under plum trees. So yeah, they went into a lot of detail when creating this place and it is so flipping cool to see. The food and stuff that I had there was also really good. Slightly overpriced, but um, still very tasty. For example, that, uh, that pie that I had was about $6.00 and the scone was $3.50, I believe. But that being said, I did get the beer, the ale rather, for free. It came in the price of the tour, so that worked out well. The gift shop itself was overpriced, I uh, do have to admit. I considered, as I said in the video yesterday, buying one of those um, leaf brooches that Mary, Pippin, Frodo and Sam all have. Uh, but it was super expensive and so I decided not to. I did, however, get this bad boy which is going to be going on my door at some point once I get enough blue tack to actually hold it there. The tour guide was lovely, we actually had some really interesting conversations and we had a very small tour group so even she said it was abnormal how small it was. Including the tour guide, there were six people in that group including myself. So it was a very small personal group. We were able to get plenty of photos and stuff like that. However, the group immediately behind us was massive. And while it didn't affect me, it might affect their experience. There's a moment where you get to go inside one of the Hobbit holes. And while it's not uh, furnished at all, because it's obviously that part was done in an interior set, it is still very cool to actually just, you know, I've been in a hobbit hole now. That tree that's on top of Bag End, it doesn't, it's not a real tree, actually. Uh, another thing that I knew from the Hobbit Extended Editions, but the tour guide brought up as well, is that the tree that was there during the Lord of the Rings films, that was a real tree. But that tree had withered and died by the time that they came to film The Hobbit. So, as they were recreating the rest of Hobbiton, they decided to build a tree there. And it's completely artificial. Will you get new information out of this if you've watched the documentaries on the box sets like I have? No. It's... If you've watched the documentaries of the extended editions of both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, then you already know what is gonna happen. You kind of... Like, you know the information that they're going to give you. But that just makes it even more cool because you're able to pick up on all of the very, very small details. One of my favourite little details was the smoke coming out of the Hobbit holes. And then I remembered something that in the films, they had used beeswax as a fuel for this. Which was very good for the films because it was easy to get and, you know... It made it all look like it was smoking a lot, even though there was no fire. But, it really stunk up the place. So, instead, now they actually use proper wood. Which is really cool, and it smelled amazing. Unfortunately, as you saw in the vlog, we did have a couple of weather changes. The tour guide described it as four seasons in one day, and I have to agree with her. Literally, we had cold wind, we had rain, and then we had really strong sun at points we it was very unusual we had a rainbow as well i'm not sure if it came out in any of the uh, in any of the footage or photos that i took 
but there was a rainbow there while we were up at Bag End actually. It was really cool to see some of the smaller hobbit holes just to get a better sense of, you know, the actual size that the hobbits realistically would have been because if you've read the books, you know hobbits are flipping tiny. I mean, even if you've seen the films, you, you understand that. Like, Gandalf is huge in comparison to them, but like the tallest hobbit in records in the middle earth universe was four foot five so hobbits are very small and it's really cool seeing like these very tiny doors overall would i recommend going to hobbiton definitely i uh, if you've read the books it's brilliant because they when they made it for the films they paid such incredible attention to detail from the books that it's like walking into Hobbiton, having just read the books. If you watched the films of either The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings, then it's flipping amazing because you get to see it all. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm actually in Middle Earth. But then if you haven't read the books and you haven't watched the films, you can still go on the tour. Literally, the guy told me that apparently about a third of the people that go on the tour have no exposure to Lord of the Rings at all, which personally I think is a bit weird, but apparently it's quite common. And I looked and listened out for everything she said, and even if you don't really remember Lord of the Rings at all, or you don't have any exposure to it, you can still understand what the tour guides are saying because they explain it very, very well. So it's still accessible to you. Plus there's a chance to actually buy the DVDs and the books at the end so you know get on that because they're good they're really flipping good as i said the shop's slightly overpriced but i still think that the films are so flipping awesome i genuinely some of the stuff in there is so flipping cool and i was so tempted to buy all of it and then i was like no josh you need the money but to be honest if i ever go back to hobbiton I'm, I might just like spend, spend all of my money just to get everything. It's all going to be mine. Yeah, I, um, I'm going to leave it off there. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hopefully I can actually pull a 10 minute video out of this. <laughs> Josh from Everton here. I love how I just can record for like an hour at least and still be convinced I won't have enough for a 10 minute video. Okay, thanks for watching all. I shall catch you next time.